giving me this opportunity. Uh, so I'll just start off uh, quickly. We all lost some minutes in between. Uh, changing trends in marketing communication and its impact. In fact, uh, when I, I started off reading marketing communication in the early 2000s, this is what we read from P.R. Smith. These are the traditional marketing communication tools, advertising, public relation, publicity, sales promotion, personal selling, direct marketing, exhibition, sponsorship, word of mouth, merchandising, corporate identity. And the last one was the internet in that book. That was a chapter, but I think a lot, more a lot of changes are happening. In fact, the borders are getting blurred between the communication tools. So I'll quickly have a revisit on what we I thought I have learned in these years. Uh, you know, if, However, like everyone else, we have become tired of the same old endless streams of unimaginative and irrelevant nonsense around Macbeth full of sound and fury signifying nothing. We need communication. The question is how to create communication that make customers excited about the prospect of visiting the stores, the prospect of shopping, the brands, and how we get them excited about the two moments of truth, when we buy and when we try, and how we make communication work for sales. Uh, in fact, Building excitement to trial. Uh, I, I think a lot has been researched on this. It's about encouraging instant loyalty from day one by providing potential shoppers with a real product experience. And it's about getting shoppers familiar with new products by actually trying them out. It's not just giving free shampoo in magazines, but from uh, Radical and takes the sampling to a new strategic level of sophistication. Uh, if you are going to French e-tap hotels, they use IKEA furnitures. The idea is when, when visitors guests go back home, they go to IKEA store buy. Both globally, they use a 30 days uh, free of cost use. Uh, then we try to build excitement. Uh, we try to create a hype, excitement, and out of control expectations. Uh, Harry Potter, 96.9 million sold in 24 hours, right in an IKEA cell and fans drinking Red Bull. Subculturalization came in and we were providing a content to an existing subculture. Blogs, the personal web blogs are a great symbol of the trend. With millions on the web, shoppers congregate in order to share experiences and discuss everything from whatever it is. So uh, the virtual landscape consisting of millions of unique subcultures, building excitement through community. Uh, in fact, uh, your business depends on your ability to support and enhance the shopping because it creates sales and loyalty. One of the key to the future communication is getting and keep our future product fans to consciously build communities. Through blogs, you can track what is in their mind. Our owner of Harley Davidson can always get to talk directly to the person responsible for assembling their motorbike. And uh, PNG started off with the uh, challenges of parenthood and people shared it. So I think going back to the literature, many current critics believe advertising is on way out. Uh, Regis McKenna announced that we are witnessing the oblivion of advertising. More recently, some other marketers have said that location-based services remove the need for advertising. The fortunes of advertising have grown alongside the growth of mass media. Now that its growth has stopped, questions are being asked. So mass media have fragmented with thousands of TV stations, millions of websites, and explosion of new magazines and radio stations. Massive audiences have become more and more difficult to buy. Uh, you know, it's a very interesting thing I came across. Uh, there was a, a, a statement given by a Google CEO that advertising is the most fundamental way to sort out information and that the gift of advertising to connect people in a human way to make the kind of emotional connections that are the core of storytelling. Whereas uh, Samuel Johnson, the famous British author, 250 years earlier said, advertisings are now so numerous that they are negligent for pursuit. More TV stations, more radio stations, newspapers, cinema halls need advertising to fulfill. But, you know, marketing campaigns no longer just about cost for thousands, page views, more about learning how to interact with customers and participate in the activities they spend more time online, which is a fact of life. Media owners and advertisers are thinking more creatively now. They understand customer needs for interaction and involvement. Uh, this is demonstrated in integrating social media, new variants of advertising, radical thinking by companies like Coca-Cola or Nike, Orange, Mercedes-Benz. They're all trying to bring in entertainment. Uh, and uh, integrating brands in a, such a varied manner as sports, entertainment, music, travel, and gaming. Uh, the new advertising, reinventing. In fact, we have come to now contextual advertising. Customers want to be engaged with relevant added value content. They want to find relevant information only when they want it and share it with whomever they desire. 
Despite the hype, advertising is not going away. It's just reinventing itself to meet the needs of the social media demands. Contextual advertising are clear examples of advertising reinventing itself. Marketers now are free from the limitation of segmenting. In addition to sex, age, location, workplace, college, today marketers target consumers according to their actual behavior, interest, and passion. A man who announces his network of friends that he is getting married or, or updates his status, I'm getting married, or I have just got engaged, will immediately find as ads being served to him about wedding photographers, suit hire limousines, a romantic honeymoon holidays, and maybe even wild stack venues. So era of behavioral targeting. A 23-year-old male living in a major city, online comparing car prices, Microsoft can uh, serve him with an ad of a Mini Cooper, whereas a 40-year-old suburban businessman with children might be served with a people career. So location-based advertising. Now, in fact, uh, geo-targeting was basically serving ads tailored to websites users are geographically located. But location-based advertising, on the other hand, uses location tracking technology in mobiles to target customers with specific ads relevant to their actual location as they travel around. A 18 to 20 year old male who uh, likes guineas may be offered a free pint in specific pubs within a certain area. People talk of location-based advertising, but location removes the need of advertising. If you know where the consumer is and that is physically touching your brand, they do not need to rely upon your traditional mass media and media channels to reach her. Uh, a paper can still cover national, international, local news whilst delivering even relevant local ads. Interestingly, banner ads are now transactional banners or alternatively brand application apps, which means customers can buy directly from the banner without being taken away from their preferred platform to a website. Customers on Facebook can order a pizza delivery while on Facebook. Uh, User-generated ads. In fact, users are invited to create an ad, whether in TV or press. The PR machine work hard behind the scenes, helping to spread the word of mouth as the final selection narrowed down to the winner. Social media communities ideally into it and spread the word even further. Naturally, there are some disadvantages because negative ads can be posted, but it can be moderated, but of course with an element of transparency. Uh, long form ads, you know, that uh, they, they are typical brand standout necessarily uh, more than a traditional 30 second or 60 second ad, but they can be repurposed. And of course, there's less need to buy media space. Uh, Kraft Foods Greek chocolate brand Lacta created a 27 user generated branded movie initially for the look online consumption, but eventually seen on local TV free as it generated so much of buzz. Sponsored TV ads are a natural extension of the form ads in TV programs, including soap, opera, sports, and entertainment. Budweiser created a World Cup sponsored reality TV show in which all the 32 countries, they got 32 fans and they were eating, breathing, watching World Cup football matches together. And each time a team got eliminated, that, that fan went home. And finally, the winner was gave the award of the most valuable player after the last team. Just remember, just imagine the amount of popularity it gave. And, uh, the Bud United channel on YouTube for several times a day was uploaded. Viewers kept in touch about the favorite of the Bud House fans in Facebook and Twitter. Viewers are more influenced and you decide polling whoever is the winner is. Uh, short term ads in the this is the last thing that could have happened. Uh, in fact, somebody had to do it sooner or later. Miller Beer did it. Just a one second ad, high life in common sense in a bottle. So apps, as they have integrated all these things, and today, uh, craft food, iFood apps, uh, Skype, Twitter, Facebook, all have apps and that allow customers use their services more frequently. Uh, but integrating them together in mobile apps and TV, social media. So uh, in fact, uh, it cost very little. Uh, with 0.59 sterling crowns, you can download within a few weeks and, and add uh, several uh, around thousands uh, users. Customers use app uh, twice a week for eight to 10 minutes, usually when the show is offline. So uh, this is what you can do. You can reduce your cost immensely. And this is what the app for Glee did, the musical comedy series. So uh, postmodern advertisements, of course, uh, a new style of advertisement postmodern came in uh, that seemed a little abstract and certainly unconventional as neither the user nor the product is the hero. Uh, perhaps this was best explained by Cadbury's drum playing gorilla, this postmodern ad, which has nothing to do with uh, chocolates and gorillas. But of course, what happened, it gave a feeling good. It gave, it was fun and enjoyment. And that is what you do when you have a Cadbury. 
So uh, the ad uh, didn't tell people to feel good. It simply made them feel good. Results, uh, more than uh, hundreds of millions uh, of hits in uh, YouTube, 100 page Facebook groups, uh, bloggers who tried to identify why they like that so much and whether the gorilla was Phil Collins, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. So uh, creative ads, of course, uh, this is the age of creativity and marketers need to bring optimism as, as uh, Kevin Roberts said, uh, and joy to people. We have that used to at that point in time. He said 60 million unemployed World Bank World youths, and now we have 73 million uh, into 2022. Uh, this is the age of uh, era of idea, and uh, invest unreasonable power in creativity and humor, love, emotion, music. So marketers have to be relevant, increasingly creative, challenging, and sometimes continuous to break the clutter. Uh, personal selling into consultative selling now. In fact, instead of just a, a selling mode, now it's more a win-win situation. How you create it instead of a win-lose to a win-win scenario. And uh, G was asked, uh, it's like, G once asked its largest customers what they expected from G sales team. Customers revealed the number one thing we expect is excellent knowledge of our company, our industry, and the environment in which we do business. So what is your requirement? How you fulfill it is not enough. Salespeople have to understand customers' business strategies and then see how they can help. Digital body language reports. Digital body language is all of the online activity or behavior that you see from someone as navigated uh, as they navigate their site, your site content and resources. Digital body language analysis can deliver a weekly alert to each global account manager and summarize all visitors' activity from a key account, whether the brief visit or a, a deeper investigation for a particular new product. This helps salespeople to gain deeper insights into first and what is the interest of its prospect and second, what buying stage they are in. So uh, yeah, alternatively, reports can analyze prospect interest levels in both the region and the product and allow marketers to identify the area in need of additional focus that should be given. Affiliate marketing. And of course, affiliate marketing is a marketing arrangement in which affiliate receives a commission for a visit, sign up, or a sale they generate for a merchant. Uh, a marketing, in fact, what affiliate marketing do? Simply put, affiliate marketing involves referring a product or service by sharing it up on a blog, social media platform, or website. The affiliate earns a commission, and each time someone makes a purchase, then unique link or code associated with their recommendation. I'll quickly uh, run. Then, of course, influencer marketing. Surprisingly, micro influencers up to one lakh followers and nano influencers up to 10,000 followers are often more effective than their popular colleagues. Uh, this has to do with the fact that they pay a lot of attention to the equality of the content and typically do immense work in adjusting their audience. Another important consideration the duration of blogger and integrations. One time or short marketing activities may not bring the desired effect. Ambassadorship, on the other hand, or long-term cooperation with a popular opinion leader can value can add value to the brand customer communication. Video marketing, the rapid growth in popularity of video content and playable ads have quick, uh, is, has been quite noticeable in the recent years. It does not uh, become a surprise that the more and more people, especially the generation Z and Alpha, who, who may be just entering the age of uh, active consumption, choose the format and the content. Uh, the main distribution feature of video and playable ads are over regular banners, if that they are immersive. So um, messenger marketing is another customer acquisition tool, which is relatively new and can be very effective. An upside of messenger marketing is the instant customer feedback, which can be vital for many products and services. Bots, which are software programs that performs automated, repeated, and predefined tasks, uh, provide a polite and thorough response at any time of the day and night, and artificial intelligence development is making them more and more human-like, smart, and capable of imitating a fully-fledged dialogue. Uh, well, uh, then chat boxes are there. And together, the influencer marketing, the messenger marketing, and the video marketing, uh, they help you communicate with 
to both broad and narrow audiences. They work well with informed and interested clients, those barely aware of the brand and cool clients. Finally, they allow you to vary the tone of voice from purely entertaining and informal to strictly business. If you do not currently use any of these tools, you may want to consider adding them to your marketing mix. And in the metaverse, now the, we, we are talking about it. The metaverse is the vision of how next generation of internet will operate. A metaverse will be an improved digital environment, which is possible to move seamlessly between work, play, shopping, socializing, creativity, and one digital landscape. What form of landscape will it take is subject to debate. Firms such as Meta Facebook are investing heavily in an immersive experience where users with wearable hardware discard reality for a pure virtual world, interacting by avatars, the basis of OSS depicted in Ernst Klein's novel, Reading Between the Play Player One. Uh, an integration of a physical environment with digital where real world is overlaid with digital surfaces and objects. The metaverse could fundamentally change not only how humans interact with technology, but also how they interact with each other and the world around them. At the moment, Metaverse is mainly a commercial enterprise. The building blocks are being rapidly developed uh, by big corporates, including gaming and technology companies. Firms like Facebook, Apple, Google, Microsoft are direct, in direct competition, drawing more, uh, their enormous technological resources to design their own Metaverse. Uh, well, how does the Metaverse work? The way the Metaverse will work uh, is still being defined but it will probably provide users with a single avatar or digital identity, which grants them access to an integrated digital ecosystem. With, within this metaverse, users may ultimately be able to perform all the online tasks that are currently spread across separate digital properties like websites and apps, ideally without the need of any password and user accounts and characterize current digital experiences. Uh, how will the metaverse change the world? Like the internet, the metaverse could deliver enormous benefits in some areas, but it could also dramatically amplify existing societal problems. Internet surveillance by the governments, corporations already infringes on civil liberties, human agencies and privacy. Social media feeds popularization by spreading disinformation and sheltering users from alternative views. Now, the metaverse could fundamentally change not only how humans interact with technology, but how they interact with each other and the world around them. Uh, well, uh, uh, so I'll quickly get into the main, it, it, it will be increasingly easy for sophisticated algorithms to collect far more complex dynamic data on users. They could include heart rate, uh, pupil dilation, gestures, and gaze direction. And... Uh, the benefits the metaverse could bring all advances in the areas of society beyond gaming to healthcare, education, commercial, and creative industries. For example, much like the internet, the metaverse offers the chance to facilitate the sharing of knowledge. So uh, you, we need to rewrite the marketing rules. Companies need to define your metaverse goals, whether they want to be a part of the metaverse and if their brands, consumers are there, do they want to increase awareness of new products, position their brands and generate favorable sentiment or promote loyalty. In fact, already companies like Gucci are already into this. Last year, it drew 19.9 million visitors in two weeks when it launched a metaverse version of its real world Gucci garden on Roblox. And, and there are so many examples. So design experience is happening to target. Consumers tend to see brands in metaverse as innovative. So the bar for delivering innovative experience is high. Companies need to determine the ideal balance between native advertising, immersive experiences, including games, virtual stores, events and sponsorship, real world activations to complement the metaverse. Consumers tend to see brands in the metaverse as, as innovative, so the bar for delivering innovative experiences is already high. So experiment with money-making models. Direct sales may not be uh, front and center on the metaverse right now, but that doesn't mean brands shouldn't think of heading and planning to capture future potential. Uh, Forever 21, for example, sells beyond and Robolex for under a dollar. On the other hand uh, of the scale, uh, other side of the scale, Gucci sold a digital version of the Diana's bag last year for $4,115, more than the price of its physical item itself. So you can understand this change is happening. Create, leverage, and partner for Metaverse new capabilities. Uh, for the Metaverse, as for any new venture, brands should access the skills they will need, identify which they have already have and which they must acquire and appoint someone to lead the development and execution of a coherent strategy to capture the brand value. Uh, in fact, proactively plan for risk to the brand. 
There may be precautionary examples of brands that expose themselves to the risk of engaging directly with customers online without having prepared for a rapid feedback loop of the internet. In fact, one global electronics brand launched a new line of products with great fanfare on its metaverse venue, but disappointed fans had trouble gaining access and had to virtually queue outside the venue. So these risks are there, one has to prepare beforehand. Rethink how you measure marketing success. So uh, digital marketing typically focuses on metrics such as number of visitors, conversion, likes and shares, as well as the cost of acquiring customers. Now is the right time to adopt a test and learn mindset to open to experiments in the metaverse and to move on quickly from the failure and capitalize on the success. Metaverse is going to stay here, my friends. So no matter how it evolves, uh, levels of innovation and consumer adoption will probably accelerate. When we consider how quickly platforms are evolving, the new use cases emerging, it's clear brands will have incentives to go on test and learn. Uh, it will be also imperative for marketers to secure talent required to keep up with the rapid developments in the area as augmented and virtual reality, consumer journey analytics and social commerce. Uh, well, finally, it can also extend to the areas of uh, operations, production, R&D, HR, and so forth. And lastly, now the challenge is spe specifically for the small businesses. Communication, a crucial marketing strategy, but can be a lot to handle on your own. Now, whether you choose to continue doing it themselves or hire someone to do for them. Now, or absolutely need to gradually invest in the marketing technology. Recently, I was in a, a summit and there finally everybody concluded that by 2030, uh, at least 30% of our business will seriously go online and 70% may be still with the brick and mortar. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation.